Right now, the Rutgers scandal, it spreads. Four men have now fallen because of the actions of one man. Should others lose their jobs as well? And next, low, no lawmakers arrested to re today. Hooray. I feel like we ought to rejoice here between Albany and New York City here the way this week's gone. We're going to hear from one New York State lawmaker on what is wrong with the Capitol. And later, taking a bite out of the Big Apple, this mayoral candidate says New York made him the man that he is, so now he wants to give back. Our interview, Dominic's interview with the Republican candidate, John Casamitidis. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. Thanks so much for joining us this Friday evening, April 5th. Now, we begin tonight with the ever-expanding scandal at a Rutgers University. Another one down today. The Rutgers basketball coach, Mike Rice, as we all know, fired earlier this week after videotaped surface showing him exploding during practice after practice, using homophobic slurs, grabbing kids, kicking them, throwing basketballs, even at a player's head. But since then, others have been taken down by this recording as well. And today, the Rutgers athletic director, Tim Pernetti, he turned in his papers and the university president very happily accepted them. That president... Well, he spoke today. Today, Rutgers Athletic Director Tim Fernetti offered me his resignation, and I have accepted it. Tim and I mutually agreed that this is in the best interest of Rutgers. I appreciate the positive things that Tim has done for the university, but I also recognize the gravity of recent developments in regard to the men's basketball program. This was a failure of process. I regret that I did not ask to see the video when Tim first told me of its existence because I am certain that this situation would have had a very different outcome had I done so. So I want to personally apologize to the entire Rutgers community. I also apologize to the LGBTQ community and all of us who share their values for the homophobic slurs shown on that video. I personally know how hurtful that language can be. Tim gave me a summary description of the situation regarding Coach Mike Rice last fall. Relying on that summary, I agreed with and supported his recommendation to suspend rather than fire Coach Rice at that time. It was not until Tuesday evening of this week when I watched the video that I had the opportunity to witness personally for the first time what Tim had seen last fall. I was deeply disturbed by the behavior the video revealed, which was much more abusive and pervasive than I had understood it to be. As Tim acknowledged Wednesday, his decision to rehabilitate rather than fire Coach Rice was wrong. All right. That's the university president, and uh, we're going to be going out to Rutgers very shortly here. But key questions obviously coming out of this, like in any scandal, who knew what and when? And moreover, how far up should accountability go? Should the AG have been fired today? Some people say that he's taking blame when he actually followed protocol. Why is the university president here, who many say at the end is the most culpable beyond the coach here, why does he, does he still have a job and the guy who came to him with the tape that he never bothered to look at is out on his keys? We're going to get into all of that. But let's see from the man today who handed in his papers, Tom, Tim Pernetti, excuse me. Uh, he spoke to the media on his way out. It's a really sad day for a lot of people, uh, including me and my family and you know, I always have and I always will, no matter what, want what's best uh, for Rutgers. So I know you guys are working hard. I appreciate coming out. Thanks. All right. Jimmy Martelli, an assistant coach, he also resigned Thursday. He's caught on the videotape, among others, uh, being a bad actor. An interim vice president and general counsel uh, who was believed to have recommended against firing Rice in December, he's also forced to resign from his position late Wednesday. All told here, these four men in your screen are out, taken down by one man's actions, but many would say aided or abetted by a university that may have been looking at things other than the well-being of the students in the athletic department. So the question then begs, 
Should the athletic director have followed them out the door today? And should more follow as well? For more on that, let's bring in live from the Rutgers University campus, Christy Duffy has been covering this story since the beginning. Christy, I'm curious, um, did people think the right people left today or are they surprised the president's still, uh, still sticking around? Well, it depends on who you ask, Rich. I mean, certainly if you ask the students here on campus, which we have been today, every student we talked to basically said that Pernetti took the fall here and they're sad to see him go. In fact, we actually just had a carload of uh, young men, students here at Rutgers University, come by chanting that they said Barchi should go and Pernetti should stay. Barchi, of course, is the Rutgers president here. Uh, Barchi did apologize at the press conference not only to the Rutgers community, but to the men's basketball team, of course, as well as to the LGBTQ community here on campus, saying he personally knows how this must have felt for them as well, hearing the, this coach scream these slurs. But Barchi also did admit that he knew that there were homophobic slurs being screamed on the tape, and he had the actions on the tape described to him by his staff, but he chose not to watch it. He says the first time he decided to pop it in was just this Tuesday, and that's, of course, when he immediately re reacted, saying, Mike, Rice should go. So the students here are very upset and sad to see the athletic director leave. He had a big presence within the student community, of course, for any student that participated as an athlete or went to any of these games and watched. Uh, one student even suggested he feels that Pernetti is being made a scapegoat and that his trust in the leadership here on Rutgers campus has really dwindled thanks to this incident. Of course, this is not the first time that Rutgers has been in the headlines for a bullying incident just two and a half years ago. We all remember Tyler Clemente. They made some big promises to change today, promises we heard just two and a half years ago. We'll see if they follow through. Live in New Brunswick, Christy Duffy, Fios, One News. Rich. All right, Christy, thank you very much. All right, let's bring our panel on this. Bill Spadea, Republican political analyst, joins us. So does Dominic Carter, political journalist himself and author. Assemblyman Tom Abenanti from New York and Andrew Whitman, our senior political correspondent. All right, we all saw the video. We're going to keep showing you the video for anybody who's been living under a rock this segment as we talk about this. Um, here's my take and tell me if you guys agree or disagree. I'm not sure Pernetti, um, I'm not sorry to see him go. But let's remember what he did. Videotape, they told the coach he was being recorded. The clown who deserved to be out on his can back when he first did this. We seeing what happened at this practice, which really looks like gladiators or whatever. But anyway, they bring the tape to the AD. AD says it, sees it. He goes up the food chain. He goes up to the president's office and to others involved. The president said again today he should have looked at the video. Now, again, this is post Penn State. This is post Hilo Clemente. This is post even Imus with the women's basketball team at Rutgers, if you remember those comments mm -hmm. and stuff. This is not in a vacuum here. So today, the AD, who gave him a 50 grand fine and a three-game suspension back in the fall uh, when they saw the tape instead of firing him, he's the scapegoat. I think they fired the wrong guy today. I think the president should have handed in his papers. What do you think? A couple things. Uh, first of all, Pernetti, you know, it's sad to see him go. This is the guy that brought Rutgers into the Big Ten. I mean, this is, you're talking about millions and millions of dollars in athletic funding and for the way, school. And by the way, we're not naive. Yeah. That had a big role well, why they kept quiet about this in the fall. I agree with that. But the other piece that was not mentioned today is this Eric Murdoch lawsuit. This is the guy that was the student athletic director. I'm not sure what his exact title was, yeah. but he was fired. He said it was wrong for them to fire me because I tried to bring this to the surface. He had the tape, so they've known about this for months. I also would question, though, and I, I wondered this today when I saw that terrible interview that Mike Rice did out in front of his home. It's like, hey, just don't, don't talk about it for a couple days, right? That was a yep. huge mistake. But here I'm thinking, why didn't he explain it a little bit? Could have talked about, look, hey, one of my idols is Bobby Knight, and mm -hmm. I'm aggressive, and I'm intense. What? Didn't talk Not about sure that, that at all. Apologize. Yeah. I think it does. I wonder if you put a camera in high school football locker rooms, if you put it across the NBA, across, well, you know, whatever it's how, worth, whatever you'd have it's it all, worth. Over the, all over the place. I've That's heard from probably four dozen coaches on all different levels, and even a lot of them that knew this guy. They said they'd never seen anything like this. You go back to the 60s when they were kids, some of them, the old school guys, they said, yeah. maybe. <clears throat> but nobody puts hands on kids like this and they've ever seen. And some of the coaches said, this guy was a problem. People knew this guy was a problem. Maybe not to this detail, going back three, four years ago from camps that they would send kids to. So 
That all said, Dominic, um, I think this guy, I think the die was cast when the governor said no good and one head wasn't going to cut it. He wanted a couple people to go down. And secondly, I think in funny way, the Big Ten thing actually was what doomed Pernetti. It, it, many people thought it might save his job, but I think the fact that they got in, the Big Ten was never going to let this scandal um, on first day when they come into the conference with millions and millions of dollars in these contracts. They, were, they had to clean house. They did have to clean house, but guess what, Richard? I think that you and Andrew have been correct on this. The athletic director, he's not, I don't think he's going to be the only one to go. The, the university president is going to have to go. The calls are not going to stop from faculty members, community residents. It is unacceptable to say that the athletic director did it by the book. The man should still have his job, I mean, based on by the book. It's unacceptable for the university chief officer to have the tape and not look at it. To me, that's even worse than him saying he saw the tape and thought that the fine was suitable. For him to say, yeah, they brought it to me, but I never bothered to look at it when students, he's supposed well, to be the I president think, of all I students, think, and think, he can say, yeah, apparently it's really bad. The students are getting manhandled here. He doesn't even look at the tape. I think that press conference, I think he gave the reasons why he's probably going to get his own pink slip at some point. These things flow downhill. So first the coach goes, now the athletic director goes. Pretty soon the board of governors will meet, and I'm sure the, or I suspect the university president will go also. And deservedly so. I don't, you know, did the AD get a, a little bit of a raw deal in all this? You know, maybe he did, but it doesn't matter. This thing is so bad it taints everybody. Pretend this is a SUNY system. This is a public university. That's what Taxpayer I was say. dollars are going into It's a public this. institution. It's held to a higher standard. And the public wants to make sure that you're giving the right example to the kids that you're supposed to be training and teaching. And, and so the question is, who's got the ultimate authority here? Uh, could, the athletic, could the athletic director have done anything more than he did do? And uh, when he did what he did, should the president have looked over his shoulder and said, that wasn't enough, do more? Where's the ultimate authority? Well, the buck has to stop with the president, That's right? what it seems to be. That's what it seems to be. Uh, like I said, make-believe, and this is hypothetical. Yeah, it they, happens also, to a state university <clears throat> in New York. Right. Um, and at the end, there's oversight, there's funding that obviously the state obviously sees with the SUNY system. If some university president said to you guys, the legislature, hey, you know, we, we left it up to the AD to decide here. Um, uh, there'd be calls for his head, right? I think there'd be calls for his head. And when you, when you look at what was actually at stake here, this was really horrendous. This wasn't just a little mistake. He didn't just slap a kid and, and say, I'm sorry, and walk away. You're talking a very bad, bad situation here. And, you know, we, we, we've talked about before, like in, with the NCAA basketball tournament, how the students seem to be the odd man out and everything. This is just another example where, when it comes to college sports where the last thing that seems to be the focus are the students themselves. And I think that's perverting a lot of college sports uh, I, frankly, I, I wouldn't mind if Rutgers came out and said, you know what, we're going we're to end intercollegiate sports. Right. We're going to focus I on education, we'll which that is that what far, we're supposed to be about anyway. Two things. You know, one, does this, is this as big a scandal if he is a winning coach? You know, you could have fired this guy a year ago for his abysmal record uh, since he got to the school, number one. Number two, it's interesting. You talk to any season ticket holder at Rutgers basketball, and they'll tell you there's an over-under in every game at what minute mark the coach is going to lose it and throw his jacket down wow. and start cursing. So, I mean, it, everybody knew. You know, this is... And this is about yeah. Big Ten, big-time money, TV contracts moving to a giant conference. Yeah. To say that that didn't play a role and then handling it the way they did in November, I think is to be a bit but, naive. But it's not about the students. No. And by the way, kids on the team, they don't know who the next coach is. They're going to have to wait a full year right. if they can find another school that they can get another scholarship at. So either they stay where they are under whatever these circumstances are, if they want to leave, the NCAA is going to make them wait a full year before they have eligibility anywhere else, assuming they can get another ride. Unbelievable. All right, we take a quick break. When we come back, we'll turn to another mess. This time, in the great state of New York, we're Albany lawmakers. Well, the good news is nobody arrested today, but that hasn't been the theme this week. We will hear from our panel on what has gone so wrong in Albany, and for that matter, in New York politics. Stay with us.